Hello everyone. Welcome to our podcast. My name is Rupal and I have with me Nupur. On LinkedIn a few days back we made a post that if you have any questions regarding LLM international taxation or studying abroad please ask us and we have received a bunch of questions and we thought we're going to answer all these questions with this podcast. So welcome Nupur. Thanks Rupal. So let's start. So what do you think what is the course structure and the eligibility for the course for this program? For my understanding I would say that the course structure varies per the university but maybe you can throw some light based on your experience. Yes of course. Um so I would talk about my experience from the University of Amsterdam. I have done my masters of international taxation from there. So the course structure of course in different universities differs and obviously you will have to go through the website of every university to find out what is their course structure but per se for let's say for University of Amsterdam the course structure is such that the in all the subjects are divided into different modules and sometimes a, one subject can be divided in two modules as well and during the entire month you study that particular module and then you give the exams so just to give an example the course starts with the foundation of international taxation for one month you would study foundation and then you would give a mock exam for the next month you would study tax treaties 1 which is the basics of tax treaties and then you would give the marks the exams where the marks will be counted for foundation as well as for tax treaties 1 in the second batch you would have tax treaties 2 which is the advanced version of tax treaties and then you would have the other modules as well so these kind of subjects are there For different different modules, you would have tax treaties divided into one and two. You would have transfer pricing. You would have EU law, VAT, and then of course you would have moot court and also negotiation of tax treaties and thesis and so on and so forth. And then advanced subjects. So the course also keeps on changing on an year to year basis. But on a general level, I would say you study for a module. and then you give the exams which is very different from what you do in india because you may be studying different subjects at one point of time but here it is one subject at a time study that in depth and then give the exams yeah i would agree to that and uh, like you said it varies it may vary from batch to batch some subject may be preponed in some semester like i had some different uh, modules in during my llm time in uh, the first semester which might not be same as yours so also during the last module you get some optional subjects yeah i think in our time transfer pricing transparency eu law and vat uh, and then good. going forward they can be obviously depending on the university and depending on the year in which you are doing they can be different other options but on a general level yes in university of amsterdam we had these options and you spoke about eligibility right so again the eligibility also differs from different universities so I, i can again talk about university of amsterdam the eligibility is that you would have some basic knowledge about either accountancy or economics or you're a lawyer so generally what kind of students join either they're lawyers or they're chartered accountants from their particular country and those are the kind of people who join the llm in international taxation and the reason is that you have some basic knowledge about law or accounts so that you can grasp more of international taxation because this is a very specialized field and uh, yeah that's that's the idea and you may be experienced uh, you may have professional experience or one or two years or you may have for example in my batch there were people who had professional experience of 15 years so i think it really varies uh what 
is the right time to enroll for the course i think it's when you feel is uh, you are ready to take on to the next step to become specialized in international taxation and move in this country which we will also discuss <laughs> um along with the next uh, topic but i think that's what i would say for eligibility What I would you? agree to that what you said, but um, just to add on few points, uh, like uh, at least I would say that yeah, accountancy knowledge would help, but that is not the prerequisite for the course. Everybody knows that entirely. Uh, ultimately, it matters how things are recorded in the book. So, account if you know accountancy, have a brief background about that. It's. good but uh, even if you don't have accountancy background and if you are a law graduate and have certain years of experience with the law firm and especially uh, it's a add on if you have experience in tax law and international tax then it will be possible to grasp the course easier easily it's just that you have to put bit of more effort because the course is very regressive uh, especially in amsterdam university so effort is needed by everyone whether it's a person having 5 years of experience 3 years of experience because the course demands so but yeah now going on to the next question what would be your criteria for shortlisting the university or what was your criteria for shortlisting the university yeah interesting uh question right so i think um i i can talk about talk from my experience for me the three main criteria for shortlisting the university was one the course syllabus what kind of topics do they cover because i always wanted to do more specialization in further specialization in international taxation second which was again a major element was finance and third which i think for a lot of people it may or may not matter is uh, what is your long term prospect about settling in that particular jurisdiction or country or do you want to just do the course and go back to your country so this may or may not be an important criteria but i think the first two are or were the most important criteria for me because i always wanted to do a course which allows me to be an international tax expert and do not restrict me to a particular jurisdiction so this course for example from university of amsterdam it allowed me or it allows me to be an international tax expert not only in netherlands but maybe in europe i can also go back to india so this is a generic course and not a country specific course so as to say second uh, important criteria was finance and why finance was important this is uh, i got the scholarship for pursuing this course for my for my course fees which is a huge element uh, of financial aspect which we will again also discuss in the next point but yeah i got the finance so i only had to take care of my living expenses so i think for me uh, to any person i would always advise look for these three major parameters do you like the syllabus do you see that is the syllabus helping you in the long run second is to check for your finances can you afford this course and third is to see the long term prospect how would this course help in you in your in achieving the larger objectives of your life whether it is settling abroad whether it is doing this course for getting a faster career prosperity in your particular company or in different other companies i think that would be mine what were yours nupur yeah i would say that uh, for me it happened that i got the scholarship and i got very limited time to revert whether i want to accept it or not so i, I ended up taking it without making much of uh, yes no uh but yeah uh, those would be the broad question i would say i also consider financing aspect aspect because scholarship like i told was one of the uh, consideration for me too and then i saw that okay this is a university which has good collaboration with in my time it is it used to have collaboration with ibfd and it was a joint program so i thought okay i am getting best of two worlds so this was another reason i thought okay that might not be the case with other universities so i didn't took much of time in deciding and then i spoke to few alumni 
that was all, their this uh, suggestion were also helpful and definitely the other point which you mentioned which i didn't took much into consideration that time but uh, i would say long term prospects is important definitely and also uh if uh, from a european perspective one has to see the language issues which may also arise because the local laws of the country tax laws are written in local language and of course international if you someone want to practice in core international taxation one has to know the domestic laws of the country even for any litigation matter or for other audit matters so yeah those are other consideration that might be uh taken care of that is true that is true language is also one aspect which one has to be very conscious of especially if you deciding to come to europe but the uh, lang- part on not knowing the language is not a show stopper you can always come learn integrate with the country uh, so it's not that uh, there are ample of people even i didn't knew language or maybe rupal you also didn't knew the language it's not that we have no uh, we didn't found the opportunities it's just that it's a added advantage and it's more easier initially but in the longer run person may find the way themselves with with or without the language and once you start living in the country you you yourself think okay let me learn the language because it will help me to uh, um, to integrate with the locals better yeah that's 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 absolutely true once you decide for a country and you decide that you want to live in that country for the longer run then it's always better to learn the language it's much easier to you know to feel integrated in the society But yeah with that moving on to the next question uh, how about financing the course so i would structure it into two questions what how much how expensive is the course and then how do you finance that i uh, probably i can take the first answer how expensive is the course again maybe we're repeating ourselves but it depends on country to country it depends on university to university but let me again go back to university of amsterdam experience and say that the course fees for university of amsterdam is 21000 euros right now and this does not include your living expenses or accommodation or daily expenses or travel expenses or co- commutation expenses as well so that's only the fee structure and then apart from that you have to incur other expenses as well of course um that would also depend upon your standard of living how much expense do you want to do every day or every month but on a general basis in my time i on a fair estimate basis i would say including your rent plus how much money you get back from the government for rent allowance plus taking into account your commutation and your groceries and your monthly expenses i think it would roughly be around 1500 1200 to 1500 euros per month or approximately 1 lakh inr per month but again this is coming from an experience of amsterdam and amsterdam is one of the most expensive cities of netherlands so if you go to any other city in netherlands and you take up a course there perhaps your expenses would be a much less. less than that yeah even in amsterdam i would say that it varies uh, some month you may incur much less expenditure some month you may not in it may be higher so i would say that uh, the estimate which you gave also may vary 200 euros up and down depending upon uh, the person to person how he or she manages and like you said not only in netherlands even if you take up the course in vienna university the living expenses may be bit down so it varies so uh, according to the country and the cost of living of the country yep. and the biggest chunk that takes the rent uh, the living expenses is the rental portion and it is very expensive to find a house in netherlands it is expensive like, and difficult yeah very expensive and very difficult uh, because of the housing crunch but that's a topic for another day 
Yeah. But yeah, the, so that's that's the broad financial aspect about the course, and there are going to be other expenses as well. So mind you, it's not just these expenses. For example, you would incur some insurance cost. Then you would have a cost, which is the passport fees or, or the visa fees that you would incur to come here. Then you would have some cost for some mandatory medical tests, for example, if you have here. So these are very normal minimal expenses. But if you keep on adding all these expenses, it will turn around that okay, this is some good amount of expense that is mandatory. Then you will mandatorily incur if you come to live not only in Netherlands but anywhere. Oh, Europe. across Europe, yeah. yeah. So just take into account that these are going to be those kind of expenses. So on an average, twelve hundred to fifteen hundred euros per month is a reasonable estimate. That some few months it will be up or down, but yeah, that's good to go. So coming on to the second part, so Nupur, what would you say? How can one finance this amount for the course? Yeah, I would say the person for a, should look for scholarship, and if the person gets scholarship, that's a win-win situation. But most of the scholarship, to my knowledge, especially the one that university provides, is uh, mainly cover course fee, certain portion of course fee. There are many within the university also know that covers fifty percent of the course fee, especially from Amsterdam University point of view. And even the scholarship which we got from FIT that covered uh, the course fee, not the living expenses. So for living expenses, uh, one has to either take loan or save it, or maybe somebody has enough saving to meet the living expenses. There are possibilities where people can work uh, because the working along with the course for um, uh, twenty hours is allowed. Sixteen hours. Sixteen hours. Okay. Uh, sixteen hours of work is permissible, and if you are able to find some employer who is okay for you, to, uh, who is okay to take you for sixteen hours a week, you can work. But Arupal may elaborate more. Uh, the University of Amsterdam course it is a bit demanding, so at least in initial month it may because you will take time in settling down. So you might not be able to do that uh, internship or say some working student position, which we'll discuss later too. But maybe towards the end of the course uh, or last few months, you might be able to manage those uh, positions. Right. But coming back to the financing the course, what Nupur was saying that one very good aspect is if you have the chance or the possibility to do work part time, but you also have to manage that along with the study pressure that you have, and generally the masters, which is only an eleven month course, it's very very intensive, and there are a lot of reading, writing, and brainstorming pressure that you have so of course look for part time but generally it's not suggested i would say especially in the months where you, it's very intensive and the course pressure is really high but how you can finance your course is first uh, scholarships there are multiple scholarships from india uh, general scholarships and some scholarships specifically for universities so there are university specific scholarships which are listed on the website second you can look for general scholarships like you have kc mahindra scholarship which gives either scholarships or student loans where you're not charged any interest on those loans when you return till the time you return the money or you can have different scholarships from tata trust they provide a lot of scholarships or you can go to a general website let's say uh, i think the website name is we make scholars.com and you can fill in the criteria there what kind of uh, university or what kind of country you're going what kind of course you're doing and then it will list down the scholarships that are that you are eligible to apply for the only thing we would say is please start processing about the scholarship or researching about the scholarship at least one year in advance so that you have adequate time to apply 
it is not necessary that you have got the admission only then you can apply for scholarships there are certain scholarships which allow you to apply for it even without getting an admission so please do your adequate amount of research before hand if you are going to start your course in september it is not possible to start applying for a scholarship in april or may that may be too late for you and you might miss your chance so scholarships is a major major aspect where you can which can help you there are certain scholarships like shevening scholarship in uk which is i guess 100% uh, which yeah. also covers your other expenses as well so please you can also check that out so for financing either you can take a student loan i can you can finance yourself or you can look for scholarships from universities or general scholarships from your specific country yeah i would agree and like you mentioned about shevening but there is certain restriction with the shevening scholarship i think uh, if you offer that scholarship you have to go back to your country after completion of the course that's my understanding not sure if there have been some changes to that and then yeah us is also a good jurisdiction i would say and there are ample scholarship in us universities also for pursuing the course apart from that i could add just that uh, it's better to look for scholarship or talk to people around uh, who have done the course who are find uh, more people who are willing to do so if you have such sort of community you know you will be more informed of what's going on what are the possibilities and if you do your research before and say you have one year or two year in mind to apply if you think that profile is not meeting certain scholarship requirement or you think your profile can be enhanced by saying x y uh, by doing x y z thing then you can work around those option because you will have ample time rather than uh, waiting till the end moment like uh, rupu you mentioned that is true and that brings us to the next question if we can work along with the course to finance it or just work along with the course and if yes then when should we start working we covered mainly you know this question that yeah uh, broadly we covered but now maybe we can we can go into the intricacies of it by saying what are the possible option of uh, going for either for internship or as a working student position maybe uh, rupal you can elaborate more into the difference between the two Yeah, absolutely. So I think uh, there are two main aspect. Number one is internship, and then there is working student. Ah, uh, internship is more ah uh, like a temporary work where you join an internship for your particular experience, and then after the internship, whether you would get a permanent job in that particular firm or particular company is not fixed. whereas on the other stand uh, other hand working student is a kind of a profile where the company has almost kind of agreed and they really like you as a candidate and they would allow you to work as you are a student so you generally go as a working student that's the entire concept where you can probably go and complete your thesis as a uh, along with getting a full time or almost full time working experience so that's majorly the difference between internship and working student and after working student it's in my experience i have seen it's generally fixed that the company absorbs you or the firm absorbs you as a as a full time employee so that's uh, the difference between the two we just to add uh, on a point on the difference uh, just wanted to mention that internship is something for if you want to do internship along with the course there is no restriction on the working number of hour but for internship you have to take permission from your university so my understanding i am not sure whether things have changed now but this was at least in my time uh, and uh, if somebody want to work as a working student especially i am talking from in the netherlands perspective one has to take a requisite visa uh, and the employer helps in applying for that or requisite uh, working student uh, permission to work as a working student yeah and uh, in that there is a limitation on the number of hours that you can work like 16 hours that people was mentioning earlier 
16 to 20 hours this may vary i'm not sure exactly what is the number of hours now and also with working student you have option that during the summer break uh, you can work full time in last 3 months yeah that is correct so i think the only advice here what we have is uh because these visa requirements and these working student requirements uh, or the number of hours it keeps on changing depending upon the regulation of the government right so in our times it might be 16 hours but may perhaps it is 24 now or it may reduce or increase whatever so please do check for those requirements from the government of uh, government's website in whichever country you are going to work or do the internship from So coming back to the point where should we do the internship is the question uh during the course and especially if we're talking from international tax perspective so from my experience i would say definitely you should do it when you should do it is what we have already discussed when the time is adequate for you you don't have full time classes the pressure is less and this would perhaps be more at the end of the course for example from my experience i started my first internship in april and for april and may i did my first internship and i did my second internship in june and uh, july so and this was a time when of course i was doing my thesis also uh, alongside and there were multiple courses that we were completing so i had to balance between the classes between the moot court between the thesis and my internship so it's going to be hectic if you want to do an internship so just uh, be mindful of that but yes to answer the question you should do it towards the end and definitely do the internship because it might uh, help you giving that exposure beyond the practical side of it beyond what you've learned in the theory Yeah, I think I would agree, and maybe if not, uh, do two internship, even one pos- one uh, position as a working student during the end tenure, like June, July, and August till July. Generally, you complete the course in terms at least June. The thesis submission happens, and then you have a lot of time around July, August. Ah, uh, to work on uh, the working student position where you can explore those months. to uh, do the working student or yeah work as a intern also uh, that would uh, give you some free space in the mind also and have more of time uh, from the, and uh, you can devote more attention to the work also the other point to add like the visa requirements or what we were talking about is varies uh, from the uh, country to country from where you are coming at like suppose you are from, if you are from eu you don't you may not require you may have different criteria then you may not even require those permission you can do uh, any number of working hours so just check on the country eligibility from the country where you are coming from and based on that you have to take the necessary action yep that's true and should we go on to a last question then yeah what are the work possibilities after the international taxation course from europe i would say uh, you should keep applying during the course itself to find the requisite job opportunities but there are definitely job opportunities but like i said that language may be an issue and uh, if somebody don't know the language of that country there may be reduced opportunity is not that i would say complete uh, nil opportunity but reduced opportunity so if you keep trying applying beforehand uh, you have more uh, chances of finding the suitable match of the role that can fit your profile and uh, you have more possibilities to explore around and just to add on to that let's take a step back if someone would ask okay what kind of job would i get after the course or what is the average salary package would i get after the course there's no fixed answer to that it's very subjective why because for example there's a person who's coming after 2 years of experience and then joining the course and at the same class there's a person who's coming after 10 years of experience and joining the course there's one person who's from the vat experience someone must be from international tax experience someone might be from transfer pricing experience so the experience of every person differs the job profile or the suitability of a job profile of or profile of a person for a job differs 
so there is no fixed answer that what kind of job i would get uh, and what is the average salary package i would get so if you want to find out about the package perhaps just see what kind of role is what you're suitable for it based on your experience and based on your profile and then just do a google search on glassdoor or indeed or any other similar websites and you might get an idea of what kind of package this kind of role is getting but coming back to the uh, point what are the job opportunities broadly dividing you can either be a consultant or you can go to the industry that's the basic broad categories if you're going in a consulting then as nupur mentioned there would be a language requirement because the local laws in europe are written not in english but in their local language so german laws would be written in german language netherlands laws would be like written in dutch language so you need to know those languages for working in that particular tax law but if you if you want to work in transfer pricing that's all done in english language so you can easily get a job in transfer pricing if you want to work in tax technology that's more technical aspect of it and generally those projects are global projects so you that because it's in english language and if you know english you can easily get a job there so if you want to work in international taxation generally international taxation is combined with corporate taxation so perhaps there is an overlap or perhaps there is not because sometimes international taxation profile also say that okay if as long as you know english it's fine because our company works in english language and not in the local laws and we have a different team for the local laws so again this is a very broad idea of what kind of roles you would get based on your experience but look out for those rules do keep an eye for it well in advance keep preparing in that domain where you want to go if the course ends in august because the convocation is in august but your course would end in june because all your thesis and your exams will get over in june so after june you're practically free so give yourself like 5 to 6 months at least to prepare yourself to be ready for rejections because there may be many and uh, keep applying and keep searching for the jobs well in advance um don't be disheartened because there are multiple requirements but there are enough and more opportunities out there just keep searching for the role that suits your profile develop your profile do the internships maybe that will add more value to your profile and you will also learn more and you never know the post, the the firm or the company you're working as an internship as an intern they might hire you so what should we do after the course there's i think i hope you've given the answer to it no but would you like to add something yeah i would agree to broadly what you said and just to add like you said for transfer pricing tax technology maybe uh, there is l- uh, less interaction with uh, local laws and or limited interaction with local laws so possibility if you already have a transfer pricing profile and you have been working earlier so it's much easier for to go ahead and and take a role in consulting side in the transfer pricing profile and like you said in in how again Uh, i would not say that in house doesn't require local language it's just that out of uh, all the in house there may be some in house role which say that okay we want somebody someone to uh, someone with english knowledge is also do but there may be uh, possibilities that some companies may require both local language and the english language too so it varies highly and even suppose if you are on a cross border assignment then you have to see how it interacts with the local language so even if they may have different local tax team but you when analyzing uh, the entire prospect you have to keep the possibilities or have to think of, uh, around the local laws also maybe in that case of course you can have a discussion with the local tax team member but eventually the point i am trying to make is that be open to learn as much as possible and uh, the other option to my mind comes is that many people go to academia also so you can go for phd also if somebody likes research they may opt for phd position or with phd position also 
Europe has the biggest advantage of uh, having both external and uh, full-time PhD. So you can even do PhD along with uh, working with consulting in the consulting role or in-house role because with external uh, PhD, you don't have to go to university for, or you have more of university obligation which full-time PhD students have. Yeah, that's true. And uh, I think we hope that we have answered your questions to some extent. We would definitely like to deep dive on every topic, maybe in a separate podcast. But as of now, I hope we gave you some idea on, on these five broad topics and the questions that we have received and we categorize those in these topics. So... Thank you so much for your time, for listening. And thank you, Nupur. Thank I think you. We, we, we did a fair job. What did you think? Let's see. <laughs> we will get to know in the coming days uh, how people will uh, give us the response for the, or give more questions to address in the next podcast. Certainly. So thank you all so much. And we'll sign off now. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.